And at this time, we ask that you take your seats and focus your attention to the area in front of the scorer's table and in front of CSI's bench as CSI's special halftime presentation, A Tribute to Heroes, is set to begin. In front of the CSI bench at this time and in front of the scorer's table, our CSI president, Dr. Marlene Springer, and CSI athletic director, Dr. Harold Merritt. They will share the experience tonight with CSI head coach Tony Patoza and his assistants. And now, ladies and gentlemen, College of Staten Island head men's basketball coach, Mr. Tony Patoza. We'd like to invite the families onto the court before I begin. All the family, if it's possible. On September 11, 2001, a cowardly act of terrorism victimized our nation and shocked the world. An act which was intended to disrupt, intimidate, and divide our country. As we have seen in recent months, as a nation, we have responded with strength and resolve that reaffirms that we are the greatest country in the world. A nation made up of heroes. Tonight, at the College of Staten Island, we'd like to honor three of our heroes, Terrence Aiken, Scott Davidson, and Tommy Hannafin. I would also like to pay tribute to Baruch College and Coach Ray Rankis, who lost a former player, John Rivera, in the World Trade Center on September 11th. Tonight, we pay tribute and say thank you. Thank you to Terrence, Scott, and Tommy, athlete, friend, loved one, and role model are just a few words that come to mind when I think of these three men. They honored us by their presence at the College of Staten Island. Tonight, we say thank you by retiring their jerseys and their numbers, which will be phased out. Upon conclusion of our ceremony, their jerseys, along with a plaque we are presenting to each family, will be unveiled in a temporary display case on the second floor until permanent cases are made. The plaques read as follows. Terrence Aiken, Scott Davidson, Tommy Hannafin. Our friends and heroes who were lost on 9-11-2001, you will always be remembered. First impressions are lasting impressions. The first time I met Terrence Aiken, he approached me with a big smile and an air of confidence. He introduced himself and handed me a resume of his athletic accomplishments in one of the area's basketball leagues. It was the first time, and probably the last time, a player will ever give me a resume. While his achievements were impressive, I took, and I'll believe it till I see it, attitude. Well, Terrence, you showed me. Though he always spent his senior year here he was a large reason that the 94-95 team won 20 games and went to the NCAA tournament. My first trip to the tournament as head coach. He was the missing piece to a team that barely made the ECAC tournament the previous year. 
Terrence was the first player I ever coached that I considered truly athletic. His ability to get off the floor was uncanny, which, was all, which he was all too willing to demonstrate with an array of dunks, both before and after practice. Any time he had the ball in the open court, there was an anticipation that something dynamic could happen. Terrence loved to play basketball. For us, he gave up his own individual ability to make us a better team, and later pursued his dream of playing ball in the Philippines. But what I remember most about Terrence was his warm smile and, and firm handshake as he looked me straight in the eyes when he would greet me, and with a slight tilt of his head, say, hey coach, Terrence, thank you for being part of our family. I would like to present Terrence's jersey number 13 to his children, Therese, Kanan, and Andre, and their mom, Kimberly.